So what we've got here is a process called the method of mixtures. So it's a way of working out what temperature something becomes if you put like a hot object into a cool liquid or if you put a cool liquid, a you have cool liquid um, and then you um, put in something colder in it. Uh, so for instance, if we had a lump of copper, let's say we've got 100 grams of this, so let's call that 0.1 kilograms. So this is our lump of copper. Let's say we've raised this copper up to a temperature of 80 degrees C. And we're gonna put this copper into some water. And our water is at 20 degrees C. And let's say we've got 400 grams of water, so 0.4 kilograms of water. So we're gonna pop that into there. What temperature will the two settle at? So obviously the copper is gonna cool down, the water is going to warm up, but what temperature they finally finish at? Okay, and we're going to make some assumptions here. We're not going to worry about the glass that the beaker is made of, and we're not going to worry about the room temperature and, and the energy transfer from the water out of its own body. All we're interested in is in that beaker of water. Here's our lump of copper. The copper is going to lose energy to the water and in our little closed system whatever energy the copper loses the water is going to acquire the same amount of energy so as the copper comes down the water warms up but the process is we're going to say it's a little sealed process so the energy is not going to be traveling anywhere else so all we're interested in is how much energy does the copper lose the water is going to pick up the same amount of energy. And at what point does that net energy transfer become balanced? So the copper's cooled down to the point that it's the same temperature as the water. So yes, they'll still be losing and gaining energy, but the net transfer of energy is going to be balanced. Okay. And for that, we're going to need to use uh, the specific heat capacity of these two. So our copper has a specific heat capacity of 400 joules per kilogram per degree C. We could have this as joules per kilogram per degree Kelvin. In this instance, it's not going to make any difference because we're just talking about energy change. Okay, so we don't have to worry about whether we're in degrees C or degrees Kelvin. And water, 4,200 joules per kilogram Per degree C, but like I said, view this can be as joules per kilogram per degree Kelvin. Okay, and for here we're talking about energy transfer in this instance. So you will have done in, um, in, in GCSE, you'll have done about heating objects or cooling objects down, and the energy transfer is just going to be the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by our delta t, our change in temperature. So this represents how much the energy is changed, how much the temperature has changed. Okay, and here we're going to say that theta 1 is going to be the temperature that the two finally set at. Okay, so our temperature change for the copper, it started at 80 degrees and it's going to finish at theta 1. So that's going to be our temperature change for the copper. Likewise, our water is going to warm up. So our water will uh, have um, the temperature change is going to be theta one, and it's going to be take away twenty degrees. Okay, so this is the water. So for instance, if theta one, for example, if it ends up at thirty degrees then our copper will have dropped by 80 take away 30, it will have dropped 50 degrees. Likewise, if this is 30, the water will have raised temperature by 10 degrees. So it will be 30 take away 20. So this, these represent our temperature change. So now we just have to use this equation and we say the energy that the copper loses, so that's the mass, 0.1, multiplied by the specific heat capacity, that's 400, multiplied by the temperature change, 80 take away, 81, 
is going to be equal to the energy that the, uh, the water gains. So again, that's going to be the mass. 0.4 is the mass. Multiply by specific heat capacity, 4,200. Multiply by the temperature change, which in this instance is our theta, take, uh, theta 1, take away 20. Okay, so if we multiply these two out, we get 3,200, take away 40, theta 1. And on the other side, we get 1, 6, theta, theta 1. So that's those multiplied by that. Take away 3, 3, 6, double zero, 3,600. Okay, so if we want to simplify, it's only theta one, we want to simplify that. So we want to add three, 33,600 to this side, effectively transferring that over there. Uh, we want to add 40 theta one for both sides, that's effectively transferring that over there. So we get 33600 plus 3,200 is going to be uh, 1680 theta one plus. 40 into 1. So that's going to give us these two added together. Well, to keep on the paper. These two added together are 3, 6, 8, 0, 0. Is that right? Yep, that looks right. Equals 1, 7, 2, 0, theta 1. So we divide. 36,800 by 1,720, and we get theta 1 equals 21.4 degrees C. That's the temperature they end up at. And that's an example of the method of mixtures.